Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. As the U.S. military launched attacks on Iraq and Syria, corporate media were falling into some familiar patterns, including TV panels dominated by former government and military officials. Here's how they promoted the September 28th episode of Face the Nation. We'll get the latest on the mission and what it entails from Deputy National Security Advisor Anthony Blinken, retired General Carter Hamm, former Pentagon official Michelle Flournoy, and former Deputy Director of the CIA Mike Morrell. That's a wide-ranging debate, all the way from the Pentagon to the CIA. Over on ABC's This Week, Martha Raddatz brought viewers a long report from a U.S. aircraft carrier, which had the look and feel of an infomercial for the U.S. military. The USS George H.W. Bush, where fighter jets are launched, precision bombs are assembled, American service members running an incredible operation at sea that never stops. The deck of an aircraft carrier is an incredibly dynamic place. But these sailors understand their jobs are critical. We watched these men and women assemble bombs, putting together a 500-pound precision-guided weapon capable of leveling a building. But throughout this deployment, there has not been a single serious mishap, and well over 250 missiles and bombs have been dropped on Iraq and Syria. A mishap in a war zone might mean the deaths of innocent civilians, but there's little indication, if this CBS report is any guide, that there will be a lot of media focus on that. Now, the U.S. airstrikes did considerable damage. Pentagon officials said, in fact, the bombs and missiles hit every intended target. Now, it should be said that there are some media outlets willing to do tough coverage on civilian deaths. That is, to call for more of them. That seemed to be the message from Fox News analyst Ralph Peters. Here he is on the Sean Hannity Show on September 23rd. By the way, another thing we got to get over, this nonsense about there can't be any civilian casualties. War is ugly, sloppy, and messy, and sometimes there are civilian casualties, especially when your enemy uses human shields. If you're going to go after ISIS, you got to suck it up and do what's right. And by the way, civilian casualties, look what ISIS is doing, and it's actually gaining them recruits. A week later, Peters complained to Hannity that the military's hands were tied by political correctness. I contacts within the chain of command, people involved in this operation, are furious that Obama has put incredible targeting restrictions on them, doesn't want any civilian casualties. This is war, dude. Yeah. Civilians die. They're going to die. You minimize the casualties, but people are going to die. Peters may have known that Yahoo's Michael Isakoff was reporting that White House policies to protect civilians from drone strikes will not be enforced in Syria and Iraq. One might assume that for Peters, even this standard is too easy on Syrian civilians. Finally, a piece in the October issue of Harper's Magazine takes a hard look at PBS, arguing that the system has strayed far from its intended mission. What was supposed to be a forum for underrepresented voices has long been just another outlet for elite establishment-oriented views. While it's often been attacked for a supposed left-wing bias, Eugenia Williamson wrote that, Today, the only special interest group the network clearly favors is the aging upper class, their tastes, their pet agendas, their centrist politics. Obviously, a piece titled PBS Self-Destructs wasn't likely to go over well at PBS. Sure enough, they distributed talking points to station managers that rather than refute Harper's claims, list the awards and ratings data to show they're doing a fine job. But that wasn't their only response. As the New York Post reported, PBS is pulling ads from the next two issues of Harper's. This is some deep irony. PBS was set up based on the principle that advertising exerts undue influence on media. So an outlet that didn't have to worry about advertisers punishing them for reporting would have more freedom to produce critical journalism. If PBS was looking for a single gesture to confirm Harper's charges, they may have found it. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.